everyone, it's Tammy, and I am going to show you guys a Halloween card that I've done for this year. So it has a little spider hanging down. I think that's super cute. And then you can lift it up and see the cat under the hat. I just think it's cute. And when you open it up, it says, Happy Halloween. So I thought I would show you guys how I made this so that maybe you guys can make one too if you're interested. I wasn't sure if I was going to do the 12 cards of Halloween and one of my friends said that she really liked it. So it's making me want to do it. So this may be the very first card of my 12 cards of Halloween. So I did do crafts and maybe I'll add some cards to the mix as well. So I don't know, I think it's super cute. So let's get started. So the first thing that you need is your base, which is an A5 size card. So this is an eight and a half by 11 that I cut in half at five and a half, and then I scored it in half at four and a quarter, making an A2 sized card that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half this way. And then I have a piece of uh, pattern paper that is four by five and a quarter and that's just going to go right on top like this and I thought it was really cute in this Halloween pattern and then I have and I've already di done my die cutting I have this piece of yellow cardstock that measures two and a half by four and um, I went ahead and used my let's toast pull tab kit or die cuts from Lawn Fawn. This is a really cute set and it's what allows you to use a pull tab. And it was made, it's called this Let's Toast because they made it, sorry if you can hear that, that's my puppy, um, one of my puppies. They um, made it so that it went with a little toaster and there was a little piece of toast. I don't have that kit yet, but I do have the die cut because I thought it would be fun to use the pull tab for other things as well. And this is what you get with that. This creates the actual pool tab, which is here. This creates this. This straight one creates this. This round one is for the toaster that would go on top if I had that kit. This is this piece, but I'll show you what to do with that. And the final piece is this piece, and I will also show you what to do with that. So I will use both of those, and I will use this piece, and this piece, and this piece, but I did not use this toaster piece because I don't, I don't have the toaster, and I'm not doing that stamp. So um, this isn't really a tutorial on how to use this, but it is pretty neat, and Lawn Fawn knows what they're doing. They, this is a neat kit, and, or a neat die, and they actually make it very easy to make a pull tab, and I will show you what to do for that. We also, for this particular card, I am using my Cauldron Bubble stamp set from Stampin' Up, and I'm using the hat, and the cat, and the, boast, and the ghost, and the little frog. So I've gone ahead and I have the dies for those. I've gone ahead and um, colored and die cut the hat and the ghost. And I have cut out the, or I have, I have the frog, but I haven't cut him out yet. So I'm just gonna cut him out. I've colored him. And then I also will need to still stamp the kitty cat. I. I had made the kitty cats and I die cut them, but the problem with that is that when I did the pull tab, the pull tab itself kept getting caught on the cat because it was raised up. So it's better if I stamp the design that's underneath the hat that's being raised. And I'll show you what I mean and why. So if you don't have these kits, you can still do this kind of a thing with anything. And if you don't have the pull tab, well, I would highly suggest that you get it. <laughs> if you like this kind of thing, if you would use it, then I think it's a nice investment. If you don't, I'm sure you can make these just out of paper, but like I said, Lawn Fawn makes it really easy on us. So I went ahead and just cut out my little frog, so I have him now. And I also want to stamp my cat, and I'm going to just take my cat 
and my block. And I'm going to stamp him at the bottom and I'm putting his tail on one side of that line and his body on the other side. Oh my goodness, you'd think I'm killing those dogs, don't you? They're so sweet. I will get them out as soon as I am done with this card and we will play. I have them crated because they are puppies and they can't be trusted. <laughs> I would have to be up every two seconds trying to get them. Now I'm just going to take a dark colored marker. It's not quite black, but it's almost. And I'm just going to color everything but their eyes. nice conversation with my neighbor earlier today he is going he is a junior at IU which is where I went to school we kind of talked about that a little bit that was kind of nice I didn't realize he was a junior already time flies doesn't it I'm gonna take a drink of my drink too Okay, so now that I have that on there, I'm going to work with the um, pull tab thing. So it looks kind of funny, but it has scores marks, one here and one here and one here and one here. And what you do is you fold the first score line in and use your bone folder to get it nice and crisp and then the second score line you fold out and again I'm going to use my bone folder and you do that to both of them so I'm folding this one in and I'm going to fold this one out Now, like I said, it's made for the toaster piece, and so this looks like a little bit of a piece of toast, and that's what fits right on top of here if you were doing the piece of toast. But I'm not doing a piece of toast. I am doing a witch's cap, or hat cap. So I'm going to put this down here, and I am going to take a pencil and outline where my hat is. So I put it along the bottom, but then I outlined where it is so that I can now cut this down to size. I'm going to cut it past that line. So I'm going to cut the entire line off. It doesn't have to be perfect at all because this is not going to be seen by anyone. Those are trash, the extra pieces. Now this is going to go right on here, like that. And all of that white stuff is covered up by the hat. So uh, before I put the hat on there, I do wanna put a little uh, spider hanging from the hat. And that's easier to do before I put it on there because I have to tape it onto the back. So what I did for that, is I need some black paper and I want to get two small punches and then I also want two larger punches. If you only have one size punch you can certainly use one size punch. I, you know, I have lots of stuff so I use what I have but I know that that's not necessarily what everyone has. I'm going to put a glue dot on the big circle. This is going to be my spiders, the rear part of my spider. Whoops. So for the glue 
stuck to my fingernail. Okay. So that's the rear part of my spider and I'm going to use a little bit of white uh, thread and I'm just going to put this straight up so it's coming off of the back of the spider. And then I'm also going to take some black thread and you can get as much or as little as you want. This is going to make some feet on the spider, some legs I guess. So I just have black thread and I'm going to take what I have, like a long piece, and I'm going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again. So I have four strands together and that's because the spider has eight legs. So when I have four on each side, that will give me eight legs. So then I have, so I have the larger dot, a glue dot, the white thread, and then four strands of the black thread. Now I'm going to put another glue dot on top. And then I'm going to top that with the second large black dot. Now I'm taking my smaller two I'm going to put a glue dot on one and put it on the front and then I'll turn it over. I'm going to put a glue dot on the second one and I'm going to glue that one to the first one. So now I have a little spider that's hanging from a thread but his legs are awfully crazy long and bundled, so I'm going to, I'm still going to make them a little longer this time than I did the last time. There we go, he has long legs. It's kind of fun. And then what I did with the first one, and I think I'll do the same for this one, is I took my white pen and I drew little eyes on his head. And sometimes this white gel pen takes a little second to dry, so I'm going to put a sparkle on the back of his, on, the, on his back, and I'm going to use one of these, oh, one of these big purple ones, like that. And then I will turn him over, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put two eyes on him, or her. And then I'm going to put purple rhinestone right there. And I got that package of rhinestones from Ally Express. It was very inexpensive. And here is my little spider. Isn't that cute? Maybe I'll put him. Isn't that cute? Oh my word, I love them, I love them, I love them. I think it's cute, and I don't like spiders, so. Way cute. The only good spider is this kind of a spider. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the hat. And the last time, the frog is looking this way, so I feel like he has to be on this side. And I had put the spider on before I put the frog on, and I think I'm gonna hang the frog, off, or hang the spider off of the other side this time. So. I think I'll like that better. I'm hanging it off of the front of the hat. So I'm just going to put him on here. And then I just have some regular scotch tape.
and I'm just going to cut off the extra thread. So now I have my spider hanging from my hat. I have a little extra tape hanging off here. And, okay, so now what you need to do is you fold these two pieces up and then this slides in to this slit that you've already die cut and then you fold them back over and now this is going to keep that in place so now I'm going to take my glue and I'm just putting glue on the white area that I cut so I know that it's going to fit and I'm going to put my hat with the spider right down on top but you have to wait until you've gotten it through the yellow or through your base or it's not going to work. So now that I have that in there you can see how it works. But that's not it. You can see how this like totally moves around and is kind of crazy. That's where this piece comes in. And this piece that they have has two score lines, one here and one here. Again, I'm going to use my bone folder to burnish the fold. And then I want this, so I'm going to turn this over, I want this to stick onto the card base and then I'm going to fold these around the thing that moves up and down and I want the small piece to attach to the big piece. So to do that I want to put glue on this side so that it'll stick to the card. It's going to stick to the yellow. So I'm going to put some glue there and I'm going to go ahead and put it underneath the sliding mechanism and close to where the lip is, but I don't want it um, to show through, and I want to make sure that this is straight in the lip. I don't want it to be cockeyed, so I'm trying to take my time to make sure that it's where I want it. And then once you have it where you want it, I'm centering my mechanism so that it will hold this in place. And so now what I can do is fold this over and then I want to fold this over. Let me make sure that okay. I want to put some glue on the inside of the smaller tab and I'm just going to fold it on top of the larger tab. I'm just going to hold that in place for a second. So now when I move this up and down, this doesn't slide all around. I can't move it around. That will keep this from going wonky and it will keep it in place. So it's really pretty cool. And now I also want to put it at its lowest position and I want to cut this so that it will be straight across there. I did get it a little bit crooked. You can see that a little bit, but I think it'll be all right. So I'm just going to use my scissors and cut that straight across. Now I'm going to take the yellow piece that came off of here and I'm going to stick that back down on top of this tab. So to do that, I'm just going to put some glue on it. and stick it right down on top like that and then I have this piece which has a little arrow cut out of it and it has a score line too so you can take this you can uh, fold it on the score line and 
then you're going to want to put glue on both sides of it. And this little arrow goes at the front and that will help tell people that they need to pull up. So I'm going to open it up a little bit so I can position this a little easier. And I'm just going to fold that around like that. And that is what it looks like, which is really pretty cute. So now I'm going to take some foam, and you don't even have to use foam. The way that they have this mechanism, it's I think it would be fine if I glued it just straight down on here. But it raises it a little bit in the middle, and I don't particularly care for that. But I think that if you don't have foam, you could do that. I happen to like this foam that I got from uh, Amazon. And I'm just taking it and folding it on top of each of itself. And then I'm going to take my non-stick scissors. I think that is important. And I am going to cut it in half because I am frugal with my stuff. And when half of a strip will do, I'll use half of a strip instead of a full strip. And half of a strip will do for this one. going to put half of a strip right here. And half of a strip right here. And then I'm going to take this whole thing and put it in the middle of my background printed paper. And then I'm going to take my printed paper and I could have done this previous, it wouldn't have mattered. And I'm just going to glue this to my base. Like that. Then I'm going to take my frog, put some glue down here. I think I went a little crazy with the glue. Have him kind of looking at the rat, at the rabbit, at the cat. I'm going to put a little bow on the hat that I just made with some twine. And I'm also going to take my ghost and put him right up here. And I also need my Happy Halloween stamp. And I'm going to put that in the front, or in the inside. Just like that. It's a little crooked, but that's okay. <laughs> I should be more careful with that because I'm forever getting it crooked. I even thought about it, but then I told myself not to think about it because if I thought about it too much, I would certainly get it crooked. <sighs> so I should probably use a T-square or something to make sure that I'm getting it straight, but I never do. And here is our card. And we're not quite finished, but we're almost. But isn't that cute? And then it has the spider hanging down. So the spider kind of goes on a ride too. I kind of like the spider's long legs. I don't kind of like it. I do like it. That's cool. And then you open it up and it says Happy Halloween crookedly, but it still says it. And then the only thing that I did different on the first card was I took glossy accents. And I did 
the frog's eyes and his back and then I also did the stars in the hat and I did the yellow in the hat and I did the cat's eyes oh I just touched that frog oh I have mail excuse me just a minute okay sorry about that but I just put glossy accents on his little eyes and that is that so I need to let it dry but that is the whole card isn't it cute? I think it turned out really cute. So I hope that you guys try this, and I hope that you like these cards, or the Halloween cards. And I think I will probably do a few more. I don't know if I'll do, sorry, I don't know if I'll do 12 or not, but I will do a few more. It'll be fun. So thanks for watching, and thank you, my friend T, for telling me that you missed my cards or that you like my cards or you were hoping that I would do the cards and you know what I think there was somebody else that said that too now that I think about it so you know who you are but thank you very much I really appreciate it because I like to do what you guys like to see obviously so have a wonderful day and happy Halloween